Hello everyone, my name is MJ Vilches of Doodle Notes and right now I'm gonna be sharing to you how I quickly track the camera on my latest AVAP. You ready? Let's do this! The first thing you need to do is to prepare or shoot the footage. You can actually download the footage that I used from the link in the description below. But if you wanna shoot the footage yourself, one of the things that you have to take note of is the camera movement. It should be minimal and it's really advisable that you don't zoom in or out. I think it's best to just add those extra camera movements later on, on post. Another thing you have to take note of is the focal length and the sensor size of your camera. Make sure you list that down when you're shooting. Also take note of the frame rate. After taking note of all of those things, we're now ready for camera tracking. So open Blender, change the layout to motion tracking, and then open the footage. The most important thing you need to do first before anything else is to set the frame rate here in Blender equal to the frame rate of your raw footage. It's important to do this to avoid problems later on after solving the camera. After making sure that the frame rates are equal, we can now set up some track points. First we need to pick a frame on our raw footage where the CGI element will be mostly on. For this footage, I'm selecting the last frame. And then to quickly set up track points on the frame, just head over to the track panel right here and then select Detect Features. Blender will then automatically plot out points on your footage. If you want to increase more features or track points, just head over to the options down here and then change the threshold and distance to lower values. If you're satisfied with the number of track points and where it's placed, we can now start the track. And since we've selected the last frame on our footage, we have to track backwards. If you've selected the first frame of your footage, just track forwards. Or if you've selected the frame on the middle of your footage, make sure to remember that frame and then from that frame, track backwards and forwards. After the tracking is done, we now have to clean up the track. To do that, we have to head over here on the graph editor and look at the curves representation of each track. Just look for a curve that is very different from the other curves and then delete it by pressing X and then selecting delete curve. Just make sure that there are no different curves on the track. Looking for them won't be difficult because their difference will be very obvious. After making sure that the track is clean, we can now start solving the camera. This is the part where we'll actually need the focal length and the sensor size of your camera. You can actually use the camera presets here if your camera is listed, but if not, you're gonna have to look for the sensor size and the focal length of your camera on your own. But if you're using your phone as your camera, there's actually an app that would tell you the specifications of your phone. Just look for it on Google Play or any app store that you have. Anyways, you'll only be needing the width for the sensor and it's very important to actually set the focal length the same with the camera. This will reduce the solve error later on. After setting up the focal length and the sensor width, we can now start solving the camera motion. It's actually very quick. After solving the camera, Blender will show you a solve error information. You have to make sure that the solve error is less than 0.2 or much better less than 0.1. If your solve error is higher than this, you can play around with the settings right here. You have to change the keyframes A and B by selecting keyframes on your footage that have some significant changes between them. At least that's what helped me in reducing the solve error. You can actually tell Blender to refine the focal length and other camera settings right here. Refining the K1 and K2 help me reduce the solve error on this footage. If the solve error is less than 0.2 or 0.1, you can now set up the orientation. Select three tracks to set up the floor, select two tracks to set up the scale, and select one track to set up the origin. This will be the center of your 3D view. You can actually check how this looks on the 3D view up here. If you're satisfied with the orientation, you can now set up the tracking scene. Blender will then automatically set up the scene on the 3D viewport. Blender will also automatically create a node setup. And finally, you can make further changes or preview your camera track on the 3D view. And that's it! That's how I quickly track the camera on my latest AVAP. Of course, there will be limitations for this. 
and I'm probably gonna be creating another camera tracking tutorial in the future if I've bought a new camera but yeah for now this is it this is how I track my camera on most of my Ava videos so yeah my name is MJ Vilchas of Doodle Notes bringing forth awesomeness to glorify the awesome over and out.